Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how to use the Waves Signature Series plugins to mix an acoustic piano. I'll show you the plugins and processors that were intended to be used for a piano, and I'll also show you some of the other ones that weren't necessarily branded or advertised or marketed to be used for a piano, but nonetheless are some of my favorites that I've, through experimentation, I've found that they work well in certain applications. I'm also going to go through each of the plugins that come as part of the Manny Mariquin bundle because I haven't really used them up to this point. I want you guys to get an opportunity to see how they work, how they sound, at least on piano in this situation. So let's get started. Here's my Pro Tools session that I've got going on right now. It's for a typical pop rock song. I've got drums, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, lead guitar, bass, and then finally over here is my piano. I've got each of the uh, signature series plugins that I'm going to be using inserted already here and just for right now I've made them inactive so they're not using any processing. Let me go ahead and play you back the song. You can hear how it sounds. The piano is featured at the beginning along with some acoustic guitar and then the rest of the instruments kick in after a couple bars. So for the most part, the piano is just playing some block chords going on in the background just to give kind of the base or the foundation of the song. Let me go start going through the plugins and I'll solo the piano and then also bring back the mix so you can hear it in the context of uh, the full mix but then also by itself uh, so you can really focus in on it. First one I'm going to bring up is the JJP plugin because this one is designed specifically or at least it has a piano setting on it. So this is the strings and keys as part of the JJP Signature Series bundle. Right now I've got it in bypass. I'll solo the piano and then bring it in and then give you an idea to hear how it sounds. So right now it's in bypass. It's not doing anything. Turn it on. So a lot of these plugins in the Signature Series bundle, they have a lot going on. For instance, there's going to be some kind of dynamics processing. Over, we have a, over here we have a compressor. There's also going to be some equalization going on. We have lows and highs. And we also have some kinds of um, uh, reverb processing or adding some kinds of delays and things like that. And so we have space over here. It can be turned on and off. We also have doubler. It's going to be doing a few things. That's probably widening or, or affecting the stereo field, but also adding some subtle delays to kind of fill out the sound of the piano. Then we have some other things over here that have to do with equalization, presence, and girth. And I'll play around with these and give you an idea about how they sound. Initially how it works is you want to use a sensitivity knob to bring up the input level of the signal. So it's around yellow. That way the dynamics processors can be affecting the piano in a proper dynamic range. So when you use the compressor you have to watch the output to make sure you're not driving it too hard near what the compressor is doing. You don't need a whole lot of it. curves. And these are additive, so you can't really cut with these. You don't want to add 
too much either. Same with the lows. Just to fill out the bottom a little bit. I'm going to overemphasize the space or the reverb. And the space is added in in parallel. So by increasing the space, you're actually increasing the output level because you still have the same level of the input and you also are increasing the level of the reverb. So that's two signals added together. Here's dry. That's the cool thing about the Signature Series plugins is you know by using the piano setting that you're going to get a reverb that's designed specifically for the piano. The processing's going on behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about a lot of the settings and dialing in a sound that's going to be good for piano. It's already set up to do that for you. Let me bring in the mix and try and figure out some settings that I think will be reasonable for this particular song. Got too much reverb kind of pull the piano back in the mix, which I don't necessarily want to do here. Just kind of fill it out. I would like it to be a little bit more present. That's really all there is to the JJP Strings and Keys plugin on the piano setting. I can also show you a few of the presets that are going on. Bring up this one. There's subtle differences. Main things are some of these parallel processors, what they're doing to the signal. You can hear kind of the phasing or doubling, delays, those kind of things going on here. Bright piano. Heavily compressed. Let me keep, mo keep moving on. Bring up the CLA Unplugged plugin next. This one isn't necessarily advertised as being used for piano, but just unplugged instruments in general. These are kind of acoustic, designed specifically for acoustic kind of instruments, acoustic guitars, acoustic piano, things like that. It also has some, just in general, nice effects processing going on. You got some two reverbs that you can use together. Uh, different kind of characteristics in reverb. So here you have room, hall, and chamber. The next one is tight, large, and canyon. You kind of mix and match these things together. You have some EQs over here, bass and treble, different kinds of compression, depending on what you're looking for, kind of subtle compression all the way up to limiting with the wall. Then you have a delay over here. I'm not really going to use the delay on the piano though, but I'll still give you an idea about how the reverbs and the EQ sound for this kind of processor. Again, need to bring up the level here so it's around yellow. So you have three different EQ curves for each of the bass and the treble. 
the sub is the lowest bass one. And you have lower and upper. You can also hear it use this as a cut, so you can back off some of the low end if you are worried about it overlapping your, your bass guitar and your kick drum. the treble EQ. And a bite sounds like it's in the nice range for the piano, so I'm just going to leave it on there. Try different compressors. Less compression and more compression. Not too worried about a lot of compression for this piano part, just because it's the chords are played about the same volume each of them, so I don't have to watch the level too much. Next, let's get into the reverbs. I'm gonna turn the direct sound off so we can focus just on the reverbs. So we turn this one off so we can go side by side. The first reverb on the left. Here's the room. Hall. Finally chamber. It goes from smaller reverb to larger reverb. Reverb two. What I'm actually going to do is use the tight over here and the hall over here, mix them together. So I have a little bit more reverb at the beginning. I still have a nice tail from the hall. It's just not, I don't have to turn it up as loud because I have the shorter reverb louder at the beginning. This is bringing the direct signal back in. EQ's adding a lot to them. The part. Don't need too much compression. The reverb just kind of fills out the space a little bit too. Last thing I'll mention at least with this processor is you have the, oppor the option or the opportunity to add some pre-delay at the beginning of each of those. Just give you an idea. It's synchronized with the tempo of the song of your host. Make it short or make it longer. I'm not really going to use it though. So that was basics. The basics of the Crystal Lord Algae Unplugged processor. It's not necessarily specific to piano, but the unplugged uh, name of it suggests that you would want to use it for acoustic piano, acoustic guitar, things like that. It's kind of a versatile plugin because you just have some basic EQ curves, simple compression, and just some reverbs and delays to add to it. Pretty straightforward. Nothing too fancy going on there. As far as the signature series plugins go, those are the main ones that I think are intended to be used for piano. Here are some ones that I've found that I like to use on piano just because they're a little bit different depending on my application. Um, this is the processor from the Tony Maserati bundle, the acoustic one. That's supposed to be used for acoustic guitar. I think in some cases it can do some nice things to piano as well. So I'm going to demonstrate it here so you can get an idea about it. I 
everything is the EQ section over here. You can control the compression based on the input sensitivity. So the more you bring it in, the more it's going to automatically compress. I don't want a whole lot of compression, so I can make up the gain at the output rather than having to drive the input. And over here you have some nice effects that depend on whether you have it on Acoustic Guitar 1 or Acoustic Guitar 2. Turn them off, turn them back on. You have kind of an exciter, some kind of delays and reverbs here. switch over to the ACG2 or Acoustic Guitar 2. This one, although the controls look the same, there's actually different kinds of processing going on behind the scenes. You have different EQ curves for this one. You have different kinds of effects too, possibly. Um, I'll let your ears be the judge of that. That's the Tony Maserati acoustic guitar plugin used on acoustic piano. Again, it's not necessarily intended to be this way, but as with everything with music, experimenting, trying some things out, there's nothing that really makes, you know, there's no wrong way to use something as long as the outcome is it sounds better. Another example of this is with the Eddie Kramer bundle. You don't really get a processor that's intended for piano. I like to use the vocals one. It's got some nice effects, reverbs, delays, and those things. Also has EQ and compression. So pretty much everything you need when you're mixing a piano. And also the, the frequency range of piano in some senses, uh, in some sense, is very similar to the vocals. So the EQ curves and things like that will work well, uh, I found, sometimes with the piano. So let me show you this one. Big on using delay for the piano, but you can if you want. Try vocals too again. Probably slightly different EQ curves and compression, algorithms, maybe even the effects are a little bit different. It's 
sounds like there's some modulation going on in this reverb that was different from the other one. So up to this point, I demonstrated the JJP, Strings and Keys plugin, CLA Unplugged, Maserati Acoustic Guitar, and Eddie Kramer Vocals. The sign these signature series bundles come with instrument-specific processors, whether that be piano, or keys, or acoustic guitar, or vocals. They also have some plugins specifically for drums, and things like that. The uh, newest signature series bundle is the one from Manny Mariquin. I'm going to show you these now. The difference between his plugin bundle and the other ones up to this point is he decided that, along with Waves, I guess, to rather than making instrument specific processors, just to make some general processors that can be used for many different things. I'm just going to be going through them. He's got uh, this is a multi band compressor, and he's got equalization. Then he's got uh, distortion, reverbs, delays, and then kind of this one that he calls a triple D that can do DSing, deboxing, and things like that. And I want to just show you all of them, maybe even show you some of the presets for piano, give you an idea about how you can use them, the controls, and how they sound. So here's the first one. This is the Tone Shaper. It's a multi-band compression equalization, and there's also some processing with the stereo width, and this is done in parallel with the direct signal over here. So let me go ahead and uh, activate this one, then I'll bypass it. You can hear how it sounds. preset I'm demonstrating right now is actually the Tony Maserati piano preset down here. And basically how it works is you have these these frequency bands, low, low mid, high mid, and high. You can change the amplitude of these, mix that in with a direct signal as well. Actually turn the direct signal on and off. And what this is going to do is add some compressed signal uh, in along with the direct one. You have these different frequency selectors down here for each of the bands. For low, you have one, two, three. Actually, all of them, you have one, two, three. And it's basically the lowest, the middle, and the highest for this band. And that's how it works. I'll just solo one of these bands and you can hear how it is. So here's uh, getting rid of the direct one. And hear that he's, with this preset, he's really emphasizing the highs. Let's just focus on one of these here. High mid. Sounds a little bit harsh, but you can hear the different frequency ranges or the frequency selectors of this range. I'll show you the other preset uh, for piano. piano down here actually switch back to the other one as well That's all it really is to this Tone Shaper plugin. Let me move on to the Equalizer. Bring that one up. This one has a lot of the basic controls that you'd see on many kinds of equalizers. So you have, this is 
a parametric equalizer. So you have these uh, frequency ranges again. There's a low one, kind of a mid one, an upper mid, and a high frequency one. Kind of the special thing that's about this plugin is that depending on what frequency you select, Manny has gone in and modeled different kinds of compressors for each of these different frequencies. I don't know off the top of my head which one's which, but let's say you pick 50. And he's decided that he wants to use an SSL style equalizer for 50 hertz, maybe API for 110, or his uh, Avalon equalizer for a different one. It doesn't really matter. I don't know what they are exactly. Um, but what he did is, is he's picked which equalizer he liked the best for each of these different frequency ranges. So rather than being stuck with one specific kind of curve in these different ranges, you get ones that are modeled after his favorites at each of these frequencies. Right now, if I pull up his preset for the piano. I'll let you hear how it sounds. He's adding a lot here around 8K. A little bit air at the top. You can go between bell and high shelf. There are also high pass and low pass filters if you want to use those. Let me kind of build off his preset and just show you some of the EQ curves that you and give you an idea about how they sound. Because if I really boost the low end, also pull it out. Now low mids. So kind of like cutting a 250 here. If I do that, I might want to Here are these EQ curves, 5K. And the high end. I can hear a whole lot from the piano though. his EQ plugin. Next let me move on to the Triple D. This one is a very unique plugin. It combines basically side chain compression over three different frequency regions. You have side chain compression for de-boxing a signal, de-harshing a signal, and de-essing a signal. The ones that are more conventional is the de-esser. This is common to be used for vocals. That's where it comes from because you're removing a lot of the S sound from a singer's performance. The way that it works is you isolate the frequency region that you want to remove, usually the high frequencies. Um, in some cases, you'll um, limit the frequency range to uh, somewhere in the, the mids, maybe 2K to 5K or 3K to 5K. Find where the singer's S's are occurring, and then you'll want to compress the signal just when those frequencies are going on. The harsher, D harsher, is a similar sort of thing. It's just done at a lower frequency, and D boxy is for the low frequencies. I think it's 
possibly intended to be used for something like a kick drum that can sound boxy. I'm going to use it here for the piano and essentially how it works is you have the ability to kind of bypass these things, bring them back in using this button. That's bypass button. And you'll see these are the meters right here. You'll see how much you're compressing or reducing the volume of the boxy part, the harsher part, or the S part. And you can find the frequency range for each of these that you're interested in. And you can listen actually to that frequency range that you're going to be focusing on by using this button. It's the audition button. Find the one that you want and you use the big dial basically to turn up how much you want to turn down the volume. By increasing the knob, you're going to be uh, telling the compressor to bring down the level of the boxy part, the harsh part, or the S part. So let me go through. I'll bypass these two. We'll focus on each of them at a time. I've already listened to it ahead of time and found kind of the frequency ranges that I don't like for each of these things. It's not necessarily, this processor isn't necessarily intended for a piano, but I'm just trying to give you an example of where you might how it works and where you might want to use it. So right now I'm turning, this is meters indicating how much I'm really turning down that low mid that I didn't like. Turn it off, bring it back in. Now I can audition the frequency that I didn't like. You really have to use your ears. You can't really depend on what it tells you here. Just the maximum frequency you can do and the lowest frequency. Just kind of tightens up or cleans up the low end. Makes it less muddy or less boxy. Let's move on to the harsher. Extreme settings, you can hear what's going on. It's hard for the piano to find because this is really a subtractive kind of processor where you're turning down the volume of each of these things. I'm just going to turn down that one. Finally, de which is really the high frequency kind of side chain compression. there's not a lot going on the piano up there I really had to crank this one up bring them all in you can hear what I've done that's better or worse that's really up for you to decide but that's a triple D next I'll show you some of the uh, kind of parallel processors you got a reverb you got a delay these are your space or echo reverb plugins um, there's a lot going on here I'll show you the basic controls and try and give you an opportunity to hear them as much as possible you have kind of a reverb amount slider here and then also dry and wet. I'll be playing around with these so you can hear kind of the reverb on its own and then also with the original piano part, the dry part mixed in. Basically your controls that select the different reverbs are here. You have hall, room, chamber, plate, space, ambience. And then you can select for each one of those three different ones, a small one, a medium, or, or a large one. So you actually have a total of six times three. That's 18 different plug-in algorithms going on. Then you can ch actually change the time. So if you took a small one, you could increase the time by 200%, or you could back it down to 50%. And 
And so that g gives you a little bit more flexibility to, if you want to change the reverb time to match more of your song or anything like that, you can do that. There's a little bit of that flexibility built into the plugin. Uh, however, if you have some idea about what you want to start with, it's usually better to start with a medium one or a small one or a large one, if that's the general idea of what you're going for, and then adjust the time kind of as a more fine-tuning um, control over here. And you have pre-delay. Um, that's up to you to decide if you want to use it or not. You have some EQ controls that just affects the reverb and not the dry signal. You have compression just on the reverb, not the dry signal. Then you have some special effects down here, the phaser and the, dis the distortion. That might just be used as a very specific effect. Not really conventional for reverb to use these, but in some cases it might just add a little bit, that extra special thing that you're looking for for a song to make the reverb stand out a little bit. So let me go through some of these. Start out just f having you focus on the reverb separate from the piano. Go through different algorithms. reverb amount kind of controls the dry wet between just the reverb and the dry signal here you have a kind of a separate one at least that's what I'm hearing that not only affects the dry wet amount between the reverb and the, and the signal but also these special effects distortion and phaser said you can turn up the reverb even if it's a small one all the way to large so here's how you might actually use it in the song Maybe compress it a little bit. Show you the EQ here. So you can darken it up if you want, brighten it up, kind of scoop out the mids if you want, fatten it up or pull the lows out. Here's the phaser again. Add a little bit of movement going on. This is added in subtly here. In some distortion. And that's a reverb plugin. Hopefully you got an idea about how it sounds, how to use it. Quickly get on to the, the delay plugin. Again, I'm not too big on using delay for piano, but I'll at least give you an idea about how it works. It's a little bit more complicated than some of the other ones because you have, again, some more special effects that you can add in on top of the delays where you're just affecting the delays. You add in some reverb, some distortion, doubler and phaser, those kind of modulation sort of th things going on. You have two controls, it's a stereo delay, the delay that's on the left, the delay that's on the right. Right now, I have it synced to the 
host tempo, but you can also switch it over and uh, base it on milliseconds. But I'm going to go back to the host one. Control your feedback for each side up here, and you can control dry and wet. It's pretty much self-explanatory. You can hear how it sounds. filter it into some of the effects I'll just go back here focus on the wet version Add some nice reverb to your delays. Smaller reverb size. It's a little bit unfortunate is some of the controls, you'll be able to automate some of these things. If you want to automate like the size, it's gonna have trouble because it's kind of calculating the reverb going on behind the scenes so you, you don't really want to automate those kinds of parameters you can automate the reverb if you want distortion so that might be a nice special effect if you mix it in to taste, you can control the level that's sent to it in the width. Doubler. Just fatten up the delays. Detune it a little bit or a lot. much as anything else, I'd say use it subtly. Otherwise, you start sound make your piano sound like it's from the 80s, which might be what you're going for in some situations. Phaser, same thing, modulation on your delays. Faster or slower. That's a delay plugin. Last one I'll show you finally is the distortion one. These last few things I wouldn't necessarily typically use them on piano, but in this case I just want to show you the controls, the features, and you know then it's up to you to experiment with them, see how you like to use them in different applications. Here's the distortion one. Your main control is the drive, uh, but you can add in the distortion in parallel. So you have your direct level over here, distortion level over here. Pull the distortion out, add it back in, pull the direct out, now you're left with just distortion. If you're careful, you can kind of make it sound like a Rhodes that's been distorted with the speaker and all that stuff. This is just, you know, a way to change your sound of the acoustic piano. You have attack and release controls, which piano is not going to be a great example of how to use them. If you're using drums, it might, you might hear more of a difference. But it's basically when the part of the envelope of the signal where the distortion is going to affect it. So you can affect that at the beginning on the attack or slow down the attack so that distortion really doesn't kick in until later on in the signal. You have your equalizer. This equalizer just affects the distortion. It doesn't affect the dry level or the direct level. So if I bring this up, these things aren't doing anything. Which is cool to be able to do that separately. So you can take your distortion. I've rolled out the high end.
And that's the the distortion or drive plugin. That's all I really wanted to show you. Hopefully this gave, gave you an idea about how to use the Signature Series plugins specifically for acoustic piano. There are some that are designed specifically for the piano and there are some that aren't. But as with everything else, just experiment, find what works. And as with everything else, when you're mixing music, ultimately all that matters is what sounds best. doesn't matter how you get there as long as in the end your product that you get uh, has the best sound. So keep those things in mind when you're mixing. Check out the main American Mary, American ones and apply them to other different kinds of things other than just piano. Some of these, like the drive, they'll make more sense or delays will make more sense on other instruments like vocals or guitars. Um, but all in all, I think that the the main American ones are a very nice set of plugins, very versatile. They kind of complement the other signature series ones because they... Uh, rather than being instrument specific, they can be applied in many different ways. And, and as much as everything else, maybe by not having that that uh, marketing or advertising or branding, this is a piano processor, this is acoustic guitar processor, hopefully that will free you up as a mixer, as a, as a musician to try some things out and see what it can really do. Um, but at the same time, don't be... Don't hesitate to experiment with some of the other signature series ones, whether it be vocals, acoustic guitars, and things like that. Experiment with them on different applications and uh, find what you think works best. Check back for some more videos when I'm going into other things related to the acoustic piano. Till then, take care, guys, and uh, keep rocking out.